All right, everyone, it's a moment we've all been waiting for. It's fight night here in the Canyon Rope community. We've got the EMO, the eight mule overhand versus the MMO, the munter mule overhand on a carabiner and a block system. Results speak for itself here, folks. Looks like uh, the EMO is going his home severely wounded. The uh, MMO is holding snug. But let's see how crippled he is. Can we still release this system after, for some reason, we pulled this to breaking strength? Yep. So uh, he survived, but he uh, I wouldn't say it's going home in one piece. We're going to have to cut this guy out and take him out on a litter. This is the pull test of the unlinked anchors down to a girth hitched sling that would be equalized in the direction of pull for a releasable single rope system. So we got an MMO down there on this master carabiner. Looks like it broke in the MMO there. So this is the overhand. Let me start to untie this. There's the mule. So yes, yeah, cinched it off. Definitely not gonna release that guy anytime soon. So did, it, did it break in the munter? Yep. No. Yep, you can see the first, that's the first wrap. This is kind of the mule, but that's the the yeah. first munter. Take two, full setup. Same test as last video. It did not break in the same spot. Munter Mule is still intact, as is the rest of the anchor. But the EMO broke right at the point where the rope bends through the rappel ring and pulls against the eight block. So the EMO and the MMO break about the same when pulled to failure. This is a Sterling C4 rope, and it's a Technor sheath and a polypropylene core. It's abrasion resistant, it's fairly lightweight, super static which is the why it tears when it breaks rather than like a dynamic rope which is made out of nylon it just snaps with a lot more dramatic slow motion because it's got a lot more potential energy it's releasing but technor is a really great abrasion resistant material and 10 kilonewtons is super good enough when all you're doing is repelling on this stuff. You definitely do not want to take lead falls on static ropes. I hope you know that. This is the 10th and final video of the Canyon course we put together on Canyon rope systems. So if you found yourself here and you haven't seen the rest of it, go to the description. It'll drop you right off on the website and you'll watch the whole thing in order. How to tie any of these knots, we're cover in the blog itself and how and where to use this stuff is literally the course. Now I like to just pull things against a figure eight because that's a pretty standard knot and to see if these EMOs or MMOs are breaking higher or lower than that. So we pulled it with a figure eight on both ends and we got in the 10 kilonewton range and then we pulled it again and got in the 11 kilonewton range. So the rest of this video is us testing knot blocks like stone blocks and clo hitches and just eights jammed up against the ring to see if one, you can retrieve your rope and two, if they slip or what they break at, or if clove hitches even cinch up on stiff ropes because the C4 is technically kind of a stiff rope. What's great about making these videos more of a standalone YouTube thing, even though they're part of an, a cohesive course, is they're more likely to be found on YouTube. More people will benefit from this. That is why we like keeping it free. And so you can go through the whole course for free. I don't even ask you for your email. Alpine butterfly with carabiner. Yes. Block on ring. Well, it looks like it didn't pull through the ring because it had the carabiner in it. Let's run it again without the carabiner and see if the knot will pull through what is a very standard repel size ring. Alpine butterfly, knot block, no carabiner this time. Oh, might 
You might do it. Do it. It did pull through the standard repel ring, uh, but I'm going to see if I can still get it untied because that's kind of the point with these systems when we use them is reusing it because I would have this tied in the middle of the rope. And as you can see, classic Alpine butterfly, still easy to untie. Bam. So looking at the area where the knot was tied, um, I would say that would pass inspection except for that little bit but uh yeah the, the point was the failure happened by the knot pulling through the ring we don't want that this is a figure eight knot block If I didn't know what it was, I'd say I wouldn't. Would you be able to identify what knot this was? <laughs> I'd have to look at it pretty closely. <laughs> um, so that pulled until it came through the ring. So, yep. So it's still in pretty good shape. Definitely in a usable, but uh, not usable by me because I just fell to my death because it pulled through the ring. Figure eight, <laughs> and then we've got the beaner clipped back to this rope. So yep. theoretically, this should not come through. We just taken it to four kilonewtons. That's uh, just kind of hanging out loose there. The, the knot's doing all the work at this point. And release it and see how good Brent is at untying knots. All you, bud. So that would be retrieval. I would get this back. Yeah. So just pull this down. And then. This also is, I think, definitely easier because it's a brand new rope. They sp sprinkle a little bit of ease of untying in this rope. I, I think with a dynamic rope where it stretches a lot, you might have a lot harder time untying it if it had been to that force. Uh, cool, totally bad. retrievable after four kilonewtons on this rope. So let's run it again and see how much it can actually hold. <laughs> well enough there's still some space at the end of the eight there and this is now gonna be really easy to untie because there's not a lot of the rope beaner still fine oh yeah great this didn't even make contact with the ring. Yep. So this yeah. is a figure eight with a carabiner in there. Brent calls it a crush carabiner. Um, the idea is that this, if this skinny 8.5 dynamic rope really cinches down, we'll be able to pull the carabiner out. See that it goes up way slower. <laughs> it's crazy. It's really Oh, good. it's getting good. Do you think if it wasn't for that carabiner, that would go through that ring? I think it would have, yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So yeah. that is so jammed up in there. It's like, would you be able to retrieve that? Because that's kind of the point, is I want to retrieve my rope by pulling on the other end. And uh, I would say probably not. That was stuck. Oh. So the carabiner came out. Now, notice this is a key nose, not a hook nose. Um, that would have been a lot more difficult to get out. It was really it was determined deformed. guy over here. It was deformed. But, bam, I was able to get it untied without beating it on a rock. What other applications would that be good for? Uh, using a crush carabiner? Yeah. Um, anytime I think you expect to have a high load on a rope and you want to untie that knot easily is just putting that carabiner in there so when it cinches up, um, you can untie that knot and reuse your rope again. I've used it in like top rope anchors. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah, so like at the master point of the top yep. rope anchor? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Brent, uh, that looked a little bit anticlimactic to me. Unless you're on the other end of the rope. <laughs> that's what we call the last ride of your life right there. <laughs> it's interesting to see how different a dynamic versus a static rope performs and stuff like this. Um, I think it is valuable to 
look uh, and know this because there are a lot of the climbing community is coming over into the canyoning world and whatnot and they'll see canyoning techniques but they didn't buy a new rope so i think there is some value in in running a test like this to see that but it is uh, really easy to untie surprisingly enough um there's the end of it unfortunately the guy that was on the other end isn't going to be using it so Time to duck. Oh, it broke on your your eight oh, block over yeah. there. All right, I'm gonna need some tools. I'll come back to this. So we're trying to clove hitch again, tied slightly loose, but the significant difference is here is this is a Dyneema sheath rope, which is the slipperiest material that uh, we make ropes out of. We're stopping at four kilonewtons. You can see it actually cinched up and seems to be holding fairly well. That's uh, potentially the highest, one of the higher loads I'd expect to see in the field with it. Yep, broke right at the knot. Well, that's interesting. Almost looks like it generated enough heat to like start melting the Dyneema. So, so busy inspecting the rope and curious to see what happened with that uh, during that last test that uh, I didn't bother taking a close look at the carabiner until I went to rig up the next one. And uh, I noticed that there was this problem with the gate. Um, it opened just fine and I, when I got the rope off, but now it won't close. And if you take a closer look, rigging the carabiner in that way, pulling against the rappel ring, it deformed it just enough that the gate won't close. So now I am down one more carabiner for science. So uh, we're at four kilonewtons. You want to go ahead and back that off, Bobby, and I'm gonna see what it's like to undo that. So I think four is a pretty good average what you should expect to see. A little deformation in the rope already against the ring, but uh, it's fairly easy to move. Yep gonna be able to get that out no problem the worst case scenario I got a slippery rope a kind of loosely tied knot it is it is tied and clipped correctly uh, with a really short tail and now let's see what happens fairly easy Far easier than a clove hitch. And it's fairly easy to put in as well. It's usually hard to set a clove hitch. Um, as a as a carabiner block system, so I, I intentionally left it kind of kind of loose, um, as if somebody you know really wasn't being diligent in seeing if that's going to hold. On this side, I just did the same thing with that stone stone hitch I've been playing around with this carabiner. So I'm just going to pull these two against each other, and uh, we're going to see what happens. So this is stone versus clove hitch.
Clovich did eventually cinch up. There was a, quite a bit of movement in it, uh, and it took a while uh, for this to cinch. And uh, this one didn't move at all. I left the short tail here, and it really stayed there. Um, the other thing that I'm looking at is it eventually did set up with a stiff rope, but this is like not going to get this out. So yes, I'm not going to reach 10 kilonewtons in the field, but uh, this is just a way of looking at, yep, that completely cinched. And even that this completely cinched up, this is extremely easy to release. So this held the same amount of force that this did until the rope broke. So it's not about how much force it holds, but it's like this is, I think, just as easy to rig and is definitely easier to unrig. Yeah, but that was very, very easy to very easy to get out. And it was very a very effective block to hold en enough force to do that on the other end. Where'd this rope come from, Ryan? What are you Where'd you doing, get this? Man? This is actually an old caving rope. Uh, pretty old. They cleaned it before they gave it to me, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's pretty damn stiff. So I, I'm surprised it's cinched up at all. Yeah, me too. And what number? Uh, this is this first one. This is a head to head. No, no, no. What no, no, number did it break at force? Oh, 10.8. 10. 10. <laughs> 10. Is a, so you get one kilonewton per millimeter. Science. Yeah. Science. Yeah.